Hi, welcome back to another video or welcome if you are new. I am Rose and I am a business student at Seneca College. In this video, I wanted to go over 10 things that every new Seneca College student should do. So let's start off with number one. So number one is to add the Seneca email account to your mobile phone mail app. Since everybody typically has a cell phone nowadays, people always like check their messages, check their text calls, um, social media messages, and email on their phone. So it's important to have your Seneca email account on your mail app too just so that it's easier and so you don't have to always like go into safari and like search up seneca blackboard sign in and then go to like your email from there it's a lot easier to get like email notifications and to stay up to date especially because like professors they email a lot sometimes and they email like in the announcements so it's a lot easier if you do use your phone a lot or basically everybody uses a phone so it's just easier to like check the Seneca email from your phone and like check like often I guess because like when I didn't have the Seneca email account um, on my phone I would like miss out on emails so one tip that I have for new Seneca College students is to have the Seneca email account on your mail app um, that you use on your iPhone or like whatever phone you have. Most people have an iPhone so I'm just gonna like show you how to add your Seneca email account to your mail app. Go to settings, then scroll down and go to mail, then accounts, then add account, go to Microsoft Exchange, then type in your Seneca email and in the description just put Seneca and then next and then sign in press accept then save and then you can go back and then check your mail app and then voila it is there you just have to press the down arrow and also if you weren't able to figure out how to add it or you didn't follow along with my steps like very well and you found it confusing you can also ask the IT desk at a Seneca College and ask them if they can add your Seneca email account to your mail app on your iPhone because that's what I did my first semester but then I changed phones recently so I had to figure out how to do it myself because the Seneca IT people they aren't there now or maybe they are because like the campuses are open but I'm not sure during COVID if they're like in person there or if they just reply by emails but if not hopefully that little like tutorial that I just showed you worked Okay, moving on to number two. Check if your program requires you to do a skills assessment test. If they do, then make sure that you book one. Um, if the first semester has already started and you haven't done the skills assessment test yet, you can just walk into the test center and do the skills assessment test. You don't have to book an appointment. But if you, if like the first semester didn't start already, then I would say book a skills assessment test appointment. And then on that day, you can do your skills assessment test before the start of the first semester. So not all programs need you to do a skills assessment test. And I did make a video on which programs do not need to take a skills assessment test. So the link will be here. I guess it'll pop up and I'll leave the link in the description below. The programs that I did not mention in that video are the programs that do need a skills assessment test and also there is an easier way to check if your program needs a skills assessment test or not. So basically go onto Google, type in Seneca skills assessment, press enter and it should be the first one, click on that 
and right away it says skills assessment test and it says do you need a skills assessment test click on that so once you click on that you'll be brought to this page and then you can just scroll down and it says do i need a skills assessment test you can just type in your program so i'm in the business administration program so i'm going to type in bag that's the program code so business administration it says i require a business math skills assessment test or you can just scroll down if you don't want to type it in and you can just see if your program requires a skills assessment test and it'll also say which type of skills assessment test that you do need and then moving on to number three pay your tuition it's due the first day of the semester the first day of classes so to do that just go to google type in my seneca it used to be called Seneca Blackboard. I don't know if it's still called that. Um, and then it's just the first one. So My Seneca, you're gonna go to Student My Seneca, and then you're gonna press Log In. So there we go. And then you're gonna go to Student Home. So at Student Home, you're gonna go to Financial Account tab, and see at the bottom, it already says Payment Due. I did not pay it yet. Today is the first day of classes actually, January 10th. So I'm gonna click on it. And then it says about $996.78. That's my tuition for winter 2022. So you can just press make a payment and then go through those six steps. I also made a video on how to pay your tuition. I went through all of this, so I'm not gonna do it right now. And the link for that will be right here and it'll be in the description box below as well. But the steps are really easy. It kind of walks you through it, like number one, two, three, four, five, six. And then number four is to make sure that you're okay with your class schedule. For the first semester, Seneca College usually makes the like class schedule for first semester students just because it's easier and new students don't really know like how to make one yet. So Seneca College usually makes like the class schedule for your first semester for you. Um, just so that it's easier and like for the rest of the semesters you'll have to make it yourself but for the first semester like you should already have one made by Seneca College and to check your class schedule go to the student home tab again and then go to manage classes and I'm not registered in any classes at this time I'm trying to get that situation figured out um, with my student advisor so normally if you are registered in classes it would show up right now um, and then if you are not okay with your schedule or you have to switch sometimes, then you can do so yourself. You're just gonna have to go to build schedule and then you can just like see these results. You can just either like move the arrow or you can just switch your classes here. I do go through how to make a class schedule and like how to like, you know, move the different time slots. Um, I, I did make it in a previous video, so I'll leave the link here and also in the description box below. I'm not going to go through it now because I already like went through that before in another video. And then number five. To apply to OSAP if you are a domestic student or if you do need loans or grants. It's um, a very good program. I make sure to apply every semester because I am a domestic student and it's for like students of Ontario. So international students can't apply, only domestic students. And the website is, well, actually I just go to Google and then I type in OSAP and I normally just click on the first one and then you just press log in and you can apply on the OSAP website through here. And then number six, book a campus tour of Seneca College. Actually, like the reason why, or one of the reasons why I chose Seneca College to go to is because they did offer campus tours and it was easy to book. I remember I was trying to book one for Centennial and I could not figure out how to on their website. And it, it just like, there was no way to like book a campus tour. So Seneca College, I don't know, they just like make things easier. Um, right now, because like we're dealing with COVID and the pandemic, you can't actually book campus like in-person tours, but I'm gonna show you right now how to look online and like see how the campuses look. So basically just go to Google again and type in Seneca College tour and then press the first one, book a tour and visit us. So it does say that all in-person um, campus tours are not being offered because of COVID. Um, but 
they do invite you to join on-demand virtual campus tours or for our virtual campus tour webinars, which is pretty cool. Let's see what that is. 360 virtual campus tours. Oh, so basically you just click on a photo and it's 360. Let's do the Newnham campus. Let's just see. I guess you click on the like whatever campus you go to and audio on recommended. Got it. Got it. Open the tour menu to explore other scenes. Awesome. Oh, whoa. This is really nice. A 360 view. Nice. And they have... Um, like you can listen to it through your like speakers or headphones programs just to name a few this is an audio tour so go ahead and put on your headphones for a oh that's pretty cool experience. let's get yeah, started yeah so this is pretty cool i'm gonna take the volume off but yeah you can see that that's like this is pretty cool this is a really nice view they did a good job but as you see you can take a 360 tour and also like they talk to you so then you can just press start and wow i don't know how they did this maybe by a drone and then you just press next and they have like um a little description box over to your right wow oh and they even named the building wow oh this is really nice um so yeah that's one option that you can do to like look and like go on a campus tour i guess virtually another way is i did do um i think i did two tours i did one of the newham campus and i also did one of seneca york i'm gonna go to the other campuses in the future like when they open up and when i'm able to take like the shuttle bus there and like film a youtube video of like the campus and show like how it looks like um, I did do one for Seneca Newnham and I did do one for Seneca York. So those videos will be linked below and also I think I can make them pop up again. But yeah, the 360 tour looks really good. The graphics are really nice. Oh wow, and you can also tour by area of study. Let's just click on the business one. That is pretty cool, wow. And they do a 360 virtual tour? Oh, this is so good. They do it by your program too, wow. This is very impressive, like very impressive. And then number seven. Check for your program orientation date. Every program has an orientation date. I remember when I started my first semester as a business student, they did have a business program orientation date. And this is where they go over the like program generally and they answer like general questions and the program orientation is usually done by your program advisors and it's also a great opportunity to meet other people in your program this is where i met like two of my like best friends in the program and yeah it's good to like meet other students in the program so that you know other classmates and they also go over like tips to be successful and this is where they actually like gave us a tip to like add the seneca email to your mobile phone so that's how i got like tip one that I went over again, like how to add the Seneca email to your mobile phone. So, oh, and also um, not during COVID, but like pre-COVID, they gave you like a like little program, like introduction bag of goodies. So, so cute. It had like a couple like Seneca things in it, maybe like a couple Seneca pens and maybe a notebook, I think, uh, but very like, uh, cute and I did appreciate those items and yeah your program orientation they do it online now so I'm gonna show you how to like check like when your program orientation is they normally email you and you'll see like when your program orientation is but if not then you can go back to Google so I'm gonna go back to Google and I'm gonna type in business administration Seneca program orientation and let's see what pops up so i'm gonna click on the first one and everything is done virtually now because of covid so i'm just gonna scroll and see like right away you can just check by your program name but i'm gonna do eag again excuse me um so it's saying that the program orientation is done through zoom and it's going to be on january 5th from 9 a.m to 11 a.m and then they give you the meeting id and yeah it's free to join and i would recommend it to every student because you get to meet other students in your program and you also get to talk to like the program advisor of the like program that you're in 
and also like other professors that teach courses in that program sometimes show up and they also talk to the students so it's good to like meet your like professors too and then number eight make sure that you have a one card i was actually like re like searching it up i think last night to see if like you still need a one card nowadays because like my first semester that i started here was like a couple of years ago so i don't know if like the rules change and they did so the one card has gone like online so you don't actually need like a physical copy anymore um and then if your classes are all online then you actually don't even need like a one card anymore and so basically what a one card is it's a seneca like id card and it has like a barcode on it and it has your picture on it so if you do need a one card then you can submit your picture virtually now because they don't i'm guessing they don't do in person anymore because of covid i remember like when i first started i had to go into the one card office and I had to get my picture taken there and then they just like put it on the one card so I don't think you have to do that anymore but I'm gonna search it up on Google like Google is our friend of course so Seneca College one card and I'm gonna click on the first one so then you'll get brought to this one card page and basically it says the one card is the official Seneca identification card. It's basically just your ID card and it shows what it looks like to the side. Well, that's like a vertical version of it, but basically it looks like that um, with Sammy the Sting, of course. And so basically your one card has gone virtual. So you can download it to your phone, virtual one card. Let's click on that. Oh, and basically it's like you can see when you go virtual, you can basically see like your account balance, how much money you have on your card because you can use your card to pay for things like parking, uh, printing. Um, and also if you do take the shuttle buses and you do have to show your um, Seneca One card. So it basically goes over the six steps that um, you'll have to do to install your virtual One card. And it'll be on the Got My Card app, which is used at every like I guess because of COVID now, you have to like scan the Got My Card app, like the one card or the barcode at like certain entrances to gain access to the campus. Like just because Seneca College only lets people who are va or students who are vaccinated to come onto campus. So it basically just goes over the steps on how to get a virtual one card. So I'm not going to go over that. Maybe in a different video I will like more in detail but i just want to say that make sure to get a one card so make sure to set up your virtual one card i guess because it's now virtual and then number nine print out your program courses table so it makes everything like more organized this was a tip that i actually got in my program orientation like so it's very important to go to your program orientation because they do give you tips to be successful so to do that you just go to google again and you type in like what your program is called so mine's the bag so i'm going to type in bag seneca and i'm going to go to the first one and basically you just go I mean, you just scroll down, you press courses. So I would just scroll down and go to courses and I would press 2020 to 2023 academic year. And I would just, they used to have like an option where they had all the courses like printed horizontally, but I don't see the option anymore. So I would just suggest to copy all the courses that you'll have to take so up to semester six for the business admin program copy because i just got a new laptop so i don't have microsoft word installed yet i'm just going to go to google and i'm going to go to google docs and then i'm going to press paste and there we go so it goes up to semester six so i would just print this out and like staple it together and like every time like you go through a semester i would highlight the ones that like the courses that you're done because not every student like takes just like the full semester one some people like some students have to take just three courses at a time because that's how much they can like do at a time if they're doing part-time 
or if they just like can't manage like that many classes at once so like uh, if you print out all the courses then you're like more organized and you know which courses you have to take and which ones that you've already done so my tip is to just like highlight all the ones that you're done every semester they did i'm like kind of a little bit upset because they did used to have like all the courses but they used to like put it in like a table and like each course like if um it's a prerequisite for another course in the next semester it would like have a line attached to it so it it would show you like in each semester so i'm a little bit upset that i don't think they have that anymore because i checked and that was the way that i got it last time um but this way works too and then tip 10 is to get a smile mentor what a smile mentor is is basically a senior student in your program that has either like that is like almost done the program or maybe they're like in the second semester and basically you'll get paired up with a mentor and you can just like ask them like general questions about the program and it's just good to have someone who has already like been through the first semester so you can ask them like questions either like through email before covid like you can meet them in person i remember my first semester i um signed up to get a smile mentor and they didn't have one in my program so they have like they had a student that was like um that was a senior but like they were like close like close to my program so like i think they were in accounting and i was in the business program so they do try to like match the program as closely as they can but if like they don't have a mentor for that program then they'll like do that like try to match it closely and also smile mentors they give you like tips or they like text you like successful tips to be successful so that's really good to know and also it's good to like have someone that you can like ask questions to as a new student so how do you get a smile mentor uh seneca college normally like emails new students like and you'll get an email that like at that like um describes like what a smile mentor is and it explains like how to get a smile mentor so you can either wait for that email or you can contact the student life email so those are the 10 things that every new seneca college student should do to be successful or just to get more organized uh i wish i knew about some of these tips or like things that i should have done my first semester so that's like why i wanted to make this video for new seneca college students so i hope that helped and i'll see you guys in another video bye